chapter 13, we're going to begin reading at verse 22. Luke chapter 13, we're going to begin reading at verse 22. Amen. The title of today's message is, Will the Saved Be You? Will the Saved Be You? Luke chapter 13, we're going to start reading at verse 22. Verse 22 says, Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Verse 23, someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Y'all, in the scripture that I just read, Jesus is headed back to Jerusalem for the final time. And while he's on his way back, he goes through these towns and these villages, and he teaches as he makes his way back to Jerusalem. And someone asks him a question. This person asks, Lord, will only a few people going to be saved? Now, he asks this question, will only a few people be saved? Now, y'all, I don't know this person's reason for asking this question. Maybe this person figured, I'm in the presence of Jesus, who knows all things, and I'm going to ask him a question that nobody else could answer but him. Now, that could have been this person's motive for asking this question, but I believe this person had a different motive. Okay. I believe this person was trying to stomp Jesus mm. or ask Jesus a question that he thought Jesus couldn't answer. But if Jesus, instead of answering the question of how many people are going to be saved, he told this person how to be saved. Amen. Mm. Amen. He told him how to be saved. Now, what if Jesus would have answered this person's question? and told him how many people were going to be saved. What would that person have done with that information? What, what would he have done if Jesus was saying, for instance, there's going to be 62 million, 544 people going to be saved? <coughs> what was he going to do with that information if Jesus had told him how many people were going to be saved? Mm -hmm. How would that information have benefited that person? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have benefited him at all, would it? No. Amen. Amen. That information would not have helped him at all. This person shouldn't have been concerned so much with how many people were going to be saved, but instead he should have been concerned about his own soul salvation. He should have been concerned whether the people that were close to him, mm -hmm. whether they were going to be saved. Mm -hmm. He should have been concerned whether his mama was going to be saved. He should have been concerned whether his father was going to be saved. He should have been concerned whether his children were going to be saved. So instead of telling this person, how many people are going to be saved? Jesus instead tells this person and the people that are there gathered with him a parable about how to be saved. He also tells them through this parable, y'all, what happens if they don't get saved. Let's look at the parable. Uh, go down to Luke chapter 13, starting at verse 24. Luke chapter 13, starting at verse 24. Jesus said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, mm -hmm. because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Verse 26, then you will say, we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our street. <coughs> but he will reply, I don't know you. Or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. Y'all, in this parable, Jesus tells these people two things. He tells them how to be saved or the only way to salvation. And he tells them what happens if they don't get saved. He tells them in this parable that the way to be saved, y'all, is to enter through the narrow door. When Jesus says to enter through the narrow door, y'all, he's referring to himself. He is a narrow door, y'all. Jesus is the only door or only gateway to heaven. The only way to be saved, y'all, is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Acts 4 and 12 says, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So in this parable, y'all, when Jesus says to enter through the narrow door, he's referring to himself. 
He's saying, you got to come through me. He's saying, the only way to heaven is by accepting me as your Lord and your Savior. Jesus' in the parable, he also tells these people what happens if they don't get saved, which is on the day of judgment, y'all, if you're not saved, Jesus is going to say to you, I don't know you. He's going to say, away from me. And y'all, in eternity, completely separated from the Lord, that ain't going to be nothing nice. Y'all know what I mean? Amen. 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 So let's go back to this person that asked Jesus this question. This person asked Jesus, pretty much, will the saved be few? And Jesus, through this parable that he taught y'all, he turns the question around on this person and asks him, will the saved be you? Amen. 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 Yo, Jesus didn't answer this person's question directly because it's not important how many people are going to be saved. Jesus, by turning the question around on this person, y'all, he was pretty much saying, don't worry about how many people are going to be saved. You just make sure you do what it takes to get in. Amen. Amen. Y'all, I don't know of any subject that is a worse subject to talk about than death. I don't know of any subject that's a worse subject to talk about than death. Y'all, when I was younger, I couldn't, I couldn't stand to talk about death. Because if I talked about death or I thought about death, it would make me think about my soul and where my soul would end up after I die. And I didn't want to focus on my soul, y'all, when I was younger. Because I just wanted to keep on sinning. Amen. I just want to keep on sinning, y'all. And uh and, and, and if you really just focus in on your soul, y'all, and death, man, it'll, it'll take you somewhere. Amen. 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 Y'all, so I try not to think about death, y'all, because if I thought about death long enough, it would make me ponder my soul and where my, where my soul would end up. As a matter of fact, y'all, Satan don't want you to never talk about death. Amen. He don't want you to think about death. Why not? Because he wants it to catch you by surprise. Oh, yeah. He wants death to catch you slipping. Oh, yeah. He wants you to not be prepared for it, y'all. Right. He knows that the more you think about death or your mortality, the more you're going to think about your soul. Mm -hmm. And the last thing he wants you to think about is what's going to happen to you after you die. Mm -hmm. Because if people think about death long enough, some people that ain't saved, y'all, might make an effort to get saved. Amen. Amen. So you want to... So the devil wants to keep you distracted mm. from thinking about your soul. Y'all, let me say this before I go any further. There are not a lot of things, y'all, that I'm 100% certain about, but there's two things that I'm 100% certain about. The first thing that I'm 100% certain about is that each and every person in this place on this morning is going to die one day. Amen. I'm not certain about a lot of things, y'all, but I'm absolutely certain about that. From the youngest person in here, to the oldest person in here. Right. We're all going to leave here one day, y'all. Whether we like it or not. Amen. 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 The second thing that I'm absolutely certain about is that each and every person in here, after you die, you're going to live again. Mm. Amen. Amen. You're going to live again mm. after you die. Amen. 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 Now, mind you, y'all, there was a, a, a time period uh, in, in history when you did not exist but there will never, ever be a time in the future where you do not exist. Mm. We're going to live forever, y'all. Death is not the end, y'all. It's only the beginning. Amen. 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 Now, I got some good news and I got some bad news. Which one you want first? Good news. <laughs> I'm going to give you the bad news. <laughs> the bad news is, y'all, there's no way for us to get around death. But y'all already knew that, right? Amen. And the bad news is, y'all, there's no way to get around the fact that when we die, we're going to live again. Amen. Because some people don't want to live again. Mm. That's why some people commit suicide and end this life early. They don't want to live again, y'all. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So the bad news is, y'all, we're going to live again. Amen. Amen. But the good news is, y'all, you are totally in control of where you live after you die. Amen. Nobody controls it but you. That's right. Think about it, y'all. God don't even control where you live after you die. Amen. Jesus don't control where you live 
after you die. That's good. That's right. Bishop, your bishop over here, he don't control where you live after you die. Now he's trying to lead you to a place yeah. which is heaven, but he has absolutely no control over whether you get there or not. Y'all, nobody controls it but you. You and you alone are, the, are totally in control of where you live after you die. Amen. So if you live in a place that you don't want to live after you die, it ain't nobody's fault but yours. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. And while we're on the dreaded subject of, of death, y'all, <laughs> let me give you a let me give you a quick public service announcement. Okay. okay. If there's anybody in here that don't have any life insurance, mm -hmm. go out and get you some life insurance. Amen. 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 Cause Amen. tomorrow, y'all, is not promised to none of us. Yeah. It's not. We don't even know if we're gonna make it out of this building Amen. today. That's tomorrow right. is not promised to none of us. You don't want to leave your loved ones with the burden to have to bury you without any life insurance. Amen. That's, right. That's wrong, y'all. Amen. 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 So if anybody in here that don't have any life insurance, Go out tomorrow and do the responsible thing and get you some life insurance. Amen. 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 Get you some life insurance. Amen. 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 Y'all, when we die, we are going to live again. You're going to live again in either heaven or you're going to live again in hell. Mm -hmm. The choice is totally up to, up to you. Yeah. Now, some people are not completely sold on the fact that heaven is real. But these same people, y'all, are hoping, if heaven is real, that God is going to just let them in, even though they have don't have a relationship with him at all. Y'all, the only thing I got to say about that is don't bank on it. Okay. Don't yeah. bank on it. Y'all, some people think a loving and a merciful God, oh, he ain't going to send us nobody to hell. That's unthinkable. Some people think... Why would a loving God do something terrible like sending somebody to hell? He wouldn't do that. Mm. Y'all, when well, the people in Noah's day, they thought the same thing mm. until that water went over their head yeah. and they drowned. Yeah. Because the people in Noah's day, y'all, refused to turn to God the same as the people in today's time. God destroyed the entire earth and everything in it. Y'all, we might thank God playing. God ain't playing. If he said, if you don't have a relationship with him, you're going to hell, you better believe it. Amen? Amen. So if you, we don't have a relationship with the Lord, it's time to start working on it right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's time to start working on it. Amen. Now, Satan has tricked people into believing all types of foolishness, y'all. Some people believe in universalism. I think I talked about this in a message that I did a, a while back. What is universalism? Universalism is the concept by which everybody goes to heaven. Mm. Whether you have a relationship with the Lord or not, everybody gets in. Mm. Now, some people will really believe in universalism, y'all. Now, universalism, it sounds good. Mm. Don't that sound wonderful, y'all? Yeah. Everybody going to heaven. It sounds good. But if universalism was true, y'all, then that means that Jesus came and he died on the cross for nothing. Right. And we know that Jesus didn't die on the cross for nothing, don't we? Right. For those people that think that everybody is going to heaven, y'all, they're going to be sadly mistaken. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all, there is no way to circumvent what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Amen. There's just no way around it. Amen? Amen. 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 That's why we celebrate mm -hmm. his life, mm -hmm. his death, and his resurrection. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because without it, y'all, we would be in a world of hurt. That's Amen. Right. Y'all, yeah. let me say this. My main objective as a minister of God's word is not to get up there and, and try to work the word to teach you how to get cars and, and houses and, yeah. and a lot of money and a good job. Come That's on. not my primary objective as Come a man on. of God. It never has been, y'all, and it never will be. My primary objective as a man of God when I'm up here, y'all, is to say something that leads you to Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Lord can save your soul from the pits of hell. Amen. 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 As God is my witness, y'all, that is my primary objective when I'm up here. Whether, I'm, whether I bring the word good or bad, that's my primary objective is to say something that leads you to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, with that being said, y'all, whether you live in a big house 
or a little house. As God is my witness, y'all, I just want you to be saved. Amen. Amen. Right. Whether you make a lot of money during the course of your life or you make minimum wage during the course of your life, I just want you to be saved, y'all. Right. Y'all, whether you're the CEO of a corporation, y'all, right. right. or you work as a janitor in the building, mm -hmm. I just want you to be saved, y'all. Right. I just want you to be saved. Yeah. Mark 836 says, for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Amen. 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 Y'all, if we seek first the kingdom of God yeah. and seek to live a righteous lifestyle, then the Bible says that all this stuff that we want, all this stuff that we desire, Amen. it will be added unto us. Amen. Matthew 6, 33. Y'all, right. if we do right by God, yeah. God will do right by us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some of us expect God to do right by us, mm -hmm. but we're not doing right by him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we get frustrated, y'all, and we feel like the Lord is not working on our behalf. But could it be that we're not holding up to our end of the bargain? Amen. Amen. Y'all, when we enter into a relationship with the Lord, we enter into a covenant. Mm -hmm. A covenant is simply an agreement between two or more people mm -hmm. to, to perform certain actions right. or to do something in exchange for something else. Mm. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6, 33, y'all, is a perfect example of a covenant between God and us. Amen. Think about it, y'all. The first part of Matthew 6, 33 says, if we seek first the kingdom of God yeah. and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, that first part of that scripture, y'all, that's our end of the covenant. Right. If we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The second part of the scripture says, and all these things will be added to you. Mm -hmm. That next part of the scripture, y'all, that's God's end of the covenant. Amen. You get it? Amen. You do something, and he'll do something. Right. Amen. Amen. Y'all, a covenant is never one-sided. Where God is expected to do everything, and you don't have to do that. In a covenant, y'all, both parties are required to do something. Amen. 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 And a lot of times, y'all, the reason why we're not getting what we need from God, y'all, is we're out of covenant. Mm -hmm. We hadn't done what we're supposed to do yeah. to satisfy our end of the covenant, so God is not required to do anything Amen. to satisfy his end of the covenant. That's right. yeah. And we're waiting on God to do something for us, y'all, and he don't do it, and we get frustrated, y'all. Mm. Y'all, if we start back being in covenant, God will start back working on our behalf. Amen. 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 The person that asked Jesus that question in the, in the scripture lesson, y'all, are only a few people going to be saved. That person was focused on the wrong thing, y'all. He was focused on the wrong thing. Instead of worrying about how few or how many people are going to be saved, he should have been concerned about his own soul salvation. Right. Amen. 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 The same thing goes for us, y'all. We can't lose focus, y'all, and get caught up on all this stuff that don't matter. This person that asked Jesus the question, how many people are going to, going to be saved, y'all? This person will focus on the wrong thing, y'all. Mm -hmm. We can't lose focus, y'all, and get caught up on all this stuff that the world has to offer. Because mm -hmm. the world has a lot to offer. Yeah. Amen. If we get caught up on what the world has to offer, y'all, we'll get distracted and we'll miss the prize, right. which is heaven. Amen. 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 As followers of Jesus Christ, y'all, a big house on a hill or a great job shouldn't be our number one goal. Mm -hmm. But heaven yeah. should be our number one goal. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to stay focused, y'all, because not everybody is going to heaven. There are going to be some church folks. Yeah. Church folks that come to church on a regular basis, y'all, that do not make it to heaven. Amen. We got to stay focused, y'all. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Y'all, there are a lot of people that claim they know the Lord, but really don't have a relationship with him at all. And Jesus said, he's going to say to those people on judgment day, I don't know you. He's going to say, get away from me. Y'all, when Jesus went to those towns and the villages, villages y'all, teaching, he was asked a question. And that question was, will the saved 
be few. And Jesus, through that parable that he taught, he turned the question around on that person. And he asked, will the saved be you? And that's the question that I got for everybody in this place on this morning, including myself. Will the saved be you? Y'all, when we die, we're not going to be reincarnated. Unfortunately, y'all, we only get one shot at life on this side. Amen. Amen. Y'all, when we die, we're not going to come back as a dog come on, come or a cat or a king or a queen. Yes. I knew this girl one really? time that she told me she lived a bunch of lives. She told me she was a queen in her other life. Mm. Only thing I got to say is that is hogwash. <laughs> Amen. We only get one shot at life on this end. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you a scripture to prove it to you. Hebrews 9, 27 says, just as people are destined to die once, one time, y'all, mm. and after that, to face judgment. Right. Everybody is going to die one time, y'all, mm -hmm. and then we're going to be judged. That's Amen? Good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Now, some people believe, y'all, when you die, you just cease to exist. Mm. Amen? This theory, y'all, is called annihilation. People that believe in the theory of annihilation, they believe that they can raise hell their entire life, and when they die, they're not going to have to answer for it. They believe that they're just going to go to a state of nothingness when they die. Y'all, these people are going to be shocked when they take their last breath. Amen. Y'all, nobody is just going to cease to exist when we die. When we die, y'all, we are going to give an account for the life that we live oh, while we were here on earth. Amen. Whether good or bad. Amen. Amen. We are going to live again, y'all. It's just a matter of where we live. Amen. And like I said earlier, y'all, you are totally in control of where you live right. after you die. Mm -hmm. Nobody controls it but you. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, God don't control it. Jesus don't control it. Your bishop don't control it. The only somebody controls it it's you. The ball is in your court. Amen? Amen. And we only got two options, y'all. God does control the options. He's just going to control where you go. Amen. Amen? We only got two options. Either you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to make it as plain as I get it. When you die, y'all, you're not going to just cease to exist. You're not going to be reincarnated. Mm -hmm. When you die, you're either going to heaven or or you're going to hell. Amen. So if you ain't got your mind made up by, by the Lord by now, it's time to get it made up. Amen. Because Amen. Amen. we're going to live forever in one or two places, y'all. We're going to live forever in heaven, or we're going to live forever in hell. Amen. 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 The person that asked Jesus uh, this question, will the saved be few? And I'm asking you on this morning, will the saved be be you. Yeah. Will it be you on this morning? Amen. 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 Will it be you on this morning? Can I can I get a yes out of anybody? Yeah. Will it be you on this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet.